Hey Vapors. Today we're going to do a simple coil build. We're going to do a simple coil build and we're going to talk about Ohm's Law. Now tools you're going to need for a build. You're going to need a screwdriver. Now you can either wrap around a screwdriver, which is, this is set usually comes about three millimeters. Or you can use some jigs. Like these are preset jigs. This one is a 2.0. Then they got a 2.5 and a 3.0. Or you can use one that has replaceable jigs. Where this one, see if they can come to focus. See, it goes from 1.5 all the way up to 4.5. 4.0 rather. And get that focus back. You're going to need wire. I'm using 24 gauge cam saw. You can use any kind of wire you want to use. Basically, stainless steel. You combine i-chrome, titanium, canthal is what I pretty much generally use because I don't do temperature spill. Now you have cotton bacon or some kind of wicking material. You can use cotton bacon. You can use Japanese cotton. Whatever you prefer. Or what do you get a taste for it? Try different things and see what you actually is more better for you. You're going to need a good pair of scissors. Now I have a small pair and I have a large pair depending on what I'm doing. Like I said, wire cutters tweezers ceramic tweezers you're going to need for your coils and you can also have a pair of metal tweezers but you're going to use the ceramic tweezers the most now basically we're going to start off where I cut two sections of 24 gauge wire all right and I'm going to use the jig I like the jig better because it's what I'm, I've gotten used to it although I have done it old school before So we're gonna take our 3.0 and general rule of thumb. I usually do three uh, 3.0 three millimeter coils. I usually don't do them small. It's pretty much a standard size I use. Everybody else pretty much uses it also. Now with the jig, which I like, you can stick the wire through the hole and just hold it. Take your piece 3.0, turn it on, and you're just gonna twist it. One. That's one wrap. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. Six is usually pretty much a good number. A lot of people use it as a standard. You might use more, you can use less. The best thing that you can do is there a site is www.steam engine.org. And they will tell you what your different things, what your different wraps, wire types, wire size, uh, coil size, what the resistance are going to give you. And do another one, same wraps, one, two, three, four, five, okay. Let's see, I'm going to screw up. All right, so now we got two coils, both for six wraps. And you always want to set them side by side, measure them, make sure they're pretty much the same. And we're going to put them on our RDA. Now, when you have an ohm meter, which I have here, which is very useful, all right, that's going to measure the resistance of your on your RTA or RDA or whatever you're building on. So we're going to take off our top. All right. Now this use. There we go. Now, when you're working on your RDA, you want to loosen up your grub screws. Now, this is what we call a velocity style deck. Make sure you back those screws all the way out. So you have plenty of space. You really don't need that much space unless you use some of the clapped ends or some of the big wire builds, flat wires, and as fat builds like your uh, alien clapped ends and uh, your staple clapped ends. And you're going to take your first coil. Now, when you're working with this type of velocity deck, you're going to use one top hole, one lower hole. 
across from each other, depending where your wire legs come out. See, this side is low, this side is high. So we're going to put this through. And the great thing about this is I can use my gauge. Try to keep it straight and place it in the position. And do this right down here. Right. And we're going to tighten. We're going to tighten our upper. Oh, excuse me. Oh, baby. Tighten our upper. We're going to tighten our lower. Now you can do it like this. You want to try to position it over the air slots on there. We're going to do our lower on this side. Should we try to get it in position? And there's our first coil. Try to put them over your air slots. You want them to try to get even. Alright. Now just to show you what's going on here. I'm going to cut one side. I only put the one side in. So I'm going to cut this first. Try to cut it as close to the deck as possible. Velocity style decks make them easy to work on. As far as cutting your coils go. Now just to show you. Just the beginning. What we're working with one coil here. Resistance is reading at a 0.56. It's a little high I think. Alright. And then we're going to put in our second coil. Again, we're going to put it on our tool or we can do it by hand. One high, one low. Put our coil over the air holes. Hold it still. And we're going to lock it down. Try to do this through New York or through a lens. <laughs> We're looking at a little screen. All right. right there. And this is a low side. In fact, I'm going to take tool around the other side. There we go. Get it in position. Nice and tight. We're going to cut our excess leads. This one's down low. Nice and close. Now you want to try to position your coils where they're even. Again, we want to over top of the air. But you want your airflow to come up on the bottom of your coil and carry your vapor upward. Got them both mounted. And now we're reading at a point, let's say a point two seven, point three zero. It'll vary. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do, no, oh, see, they're point three zero. Between a point two seven and point three zero, that's what we're reading. And let me explain something to you, and that's something we're going to cover a little later. Coil resistance will change. Not drastically, but when you work with sub-ohm, you might think it's drastic, but there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that later. All right? Now we're going to put this on our mod, and what we're going to do is we're going to check our coils for hot spots. Sorry, bear with me. I'm no master builder here. But I got tired of buying regular tanks and just, you know, not buying these coiled coil heads, not getting exactly the way I want it. Now, when you pulse your coils, you don't want it really high. I'm going to take it down to about 30 watts. Sounds good. Then you want to pulse your coils. 
Let's see. See what I'm talking about the hot spots? See how it's burning? So you want to take your tweezers. You're going to strum you. And you can squeeze. And strum. Looks pretty even. That's what you're looking for. You want it to be even. You want it to start heating up in the center and work its way out. Now I'm reading the 0.30. All right. And now you're going to get ready to wick. Our resistance seems to be holding. I'm just pulsing just to check something. Now see it went up to 0.31. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. And a lot of people complain about when they put coils on. I mean, you've seen some reviews. They'll put a coil on. They say, okay, the coil's reading at 0.15. Oh, wait a minute. Now it's 0.17. Now it's 0.18. I got to get this checked out. That's not the case. There's nothing wrong with your mod. What's happening is what they call positive thermal coefficient. Most metals, most conductors have it. When you have a resistance, things either have a neutral, a positive, or a negative thermal coefficient. As on the positive, as temperature rises, resistance will come up also. Now, canthal wire is a composite. It's not just one type of metal. It's multiple metals put together. So the positive thermal coefficient is going to be, it's definitely there. There are some metals that have actually a neutral coefficient, and there are some rare ones that have a negative. But as your temperature rises, now see, I'm at a 0 0.29, 0 0.30. Right now it's holding at 0 0.30. As it cools down, it might go to a 0.29. As it heats up, it might go to a 0.31. Your resistance will change because of that. All right, now I'm going to wick this real quick. Uh... And we'll go from there. There we go. Hold and tight. All right. Now, you can either use, like I said, Japanese cotton pads. I don't know what you guys like to use. You got to find your own way. Sometimes I use pads. Sometimes you use the cotton bacon or the or the American cotton. I like these. Just take out a piece. Figure out what size coil you're using. And you just tear your cotton. The pads are nice too. It depends on what I'm doing actually at time. So we're going to use cotton. Take a piece of cotton, you're going to turn, twist one end of it. You'll get used to figuring out what size it is, what size you should use. Alright, put it through. And you're going to pull it. You want it firm, you don't want it super tight where you can't get it through at all. And see, what I like to do when I got one size cotton, I know how much I'm using. Not everybody does this, but I do. I'll cut that, and I'll use the other side of it. Don't like to waste cotton. Especially when you're on a budget. <laughs> Twist the end, feed it, and back and forth and then you want to take that now I like to fluff my coil my cotton out with my tweezers or do a comb out comb out helps fluff it and it helps get some of that loose cotton out the way helps open it up take some of those twists out It's 
see how that cotton gathers? And that's what you're trying to get out. You're trying to get those little gathers. You're trying to straighten it out. You want you don't want the little bulges or bumps in your cotton. Which has to kind of fuck your juice flow. Now I'm going to bring it down to about there. So this is where I'm going to cut it at. Measure. Cut. I always tell you measure twice, cut once. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take our cotton and we're going to do a tuck. You want to try to make sure you're not blocking your air holes. Tuck. That's what you want enough. Just enough to get down into the well. Into that juice well, but not block your air holes. And you want to try to put the bottoms in. Looking good. Looking good. I'm going to take our juice. And I'm going to be using one of my old time favorites. I'm using Maui Sun by Naked 100. There you go. Get your coil. Push your coil real quick. And wait some more. Pulsing your coil is going to help draw some of that juice in. Alright. There we go. Then we're going to put it on the top. Now again, since I'm about 0.30, I'll probably take this up to about 40 watts. Yeah, sounds good. And that's how you do a basic coil build. All right, let's talk about Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is something I learned in physics a long time ago, and I've been in electronics, electrical engineering for a while now. Ohm's Law is basically this. Here's a chart. We got power. I is for current. R is resistance. And E is for energy or volts. Okay? So E is usually equal to I times R. Times R. Where E is the voltage. Which is equal to your current in amps. Times your resistance in ohms. And sometimes you see the symbol omega, and that represents ohms. When you're dealing with coils and you have certain resistances, like when you say, for example, on this mod, all right, see that focuses on, you see the voltage is 3.64 volts, resistance is 0.3 ohms, okay? And you see we have 40 watts at 11 amps. So if your resistance, or your amps, is 11, and your resistance, we're going to say, which well, we actually got several voltages here, but our resistance is 0.3 ohms. So it's going to be 0.3 times 11, which is 3.3. .3. That's going to be your voltage. Now you see my voltage 3.64, 3.46, 3.77. Because as you're actually using it, your voltage is going to change. And as your heat changes, so will your resistance. And that's what I was talking about earlier, or about 
positive thermal coefficient. When certain metals temperature rises, so does the resistance. So as it goes along, your resistance is not going to stay steady, it's going to go up. And then it'll drop back down. But it's so minuscule, you probably won't notice it. As you see, it's like it goes from a 0.27 to a 0.29 to a 0.30. That's one hundredth of an ohm. You're really not going to notice it that often. When you're building your coils, and which is why we have the chart here, P is power and it's measured in watts. So if you're burning at 40 watts, okay, and you have a resistance of 0.3, you can figure out just about anything else. Like I said, if we're going to be rolling with 3.3 volts, you're going to know how much current is going through. Everything works on this chart here. So when you're building lower coils, or you're building when you're rolling your coils and you're basing everything on your resistance, when you when you look at your resistance, your current, or if you're dealing with say with dealing with power, you have a set power of 40 watts. Everything's going to change. Wattage over resistance, and you take the square root. It's it's all different formulas going to work with. But when you're building, the lower your coils, 3.3. 0.15, all right, or you do a 0 0.10. The lower your resistance, the higher your current is going to be. Your current is always going to go up because the resistance. Your voltage is just going to stay the same. What it's saying is if you have a battery, and we're going to use, for example, let's talk about a Samsung battery. All right, the Samsung battery is rated 3.7 volts. It's really 3.6, but we won't get into that. 3.6, 3.7 volts. That's how much juice this battery puts out. Your voltage, even though on your mod it may change, but when you start working with the mechanicals, the voltage is 3.7 volts. Okay, let's check it. You got 3.7 volts. The lower your resistance, the higher current. It's always going to be like that because your current, and if you go by the chart I had earlier, your current is going to equal your voltage divided by your resistance. So, current in amps is equal to your voltage over resistance. The lower your resistance and your voltage is steady, the higher your current. That's the main problem. You got to, so your battery is going to drain a certain way. When you build lower resistance, you, don't, you can only get 3.7 volts out of it. I don't care what your rod says on it. It's 3. Point, or 3.6. It's always the same voltage. Your mod may say it's pulling 4.7. Or if you've got two batteries, it might be 8.4. The average or the median voltage is 3.7. If you always figure out on that number, or 3.6, depending on who you talk to, if that's what you're working with, again, if you're building low resistance coils, you're down like a 0 0.10, your current is going to be really high. And that puts a bigger drain on the battery. So when you're building mechanical mods and you want to build all these radical coils, like, you want to build like a, a alien Clapton or, or like something like a, a, a Clapton parallel or interlock Clapton, which is a bunch of different wires wired, you know, wrapped together. The way they build these different coils or your staples and your aliens. The lower the resistance, the more drain on the battery it's going to be because the voltage is going to stay the same. If the resistance is lower, the amps will go higher. Your current's always going to go higher. The best way to think about it is like this. The resistance is basically a pipe size. Okay? If your pipe is this wide, only so much water can flow through it at one time. To lessen the resistance, because the same amount of water is going to flow. If you make resistance lower, which means you got a bigger pipe, water is going to flow through it so much more faster. That's your current. The current's going to go faster. Resistance is like a restriction. The, 
the higher the resistance or the bigger the restriction, the less that can flow through it. If you think of your battery as providing electricity, electricity flows like a current. So when you're talking about ohms, everybody says you really want to know Ohm's law when you're building your coils. The main thing you need to remember is the lower resistance that you're going to put, the more drain is going to be on your battery. Now, wattage make, make, makes a big difference when you're dealing with regulated mods. Okay, but when you're dealing with mechanicals, you control that current by the size of your build, by the resistance, by your building a 0.5 coil or a 0.4 coil or a 0.10 coil. Everything is going to change that, that current because your voltage is basically going to stay the same. Now, you may see some fluctuation. Like I said, 3.6, 3.7 is what they call the median. All right. Your battery may rate up as high as 4.2. It may even drop down to a 2.8. There's going to be a fluctuation. But the lower the resistance, the higher the current. The more amps, the bigger drain. That's why you have people that complain, scared about these batteries because they're saying, oh, the battery exploded, the Buddha's guys face off. What happens is, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to build coils, all right, and you build something of a real low resistance on this battery, the battery's going to keep pulling. It's going to pull a lot of juice out of that battery. And if you short, like, and when they talk about these guys where their mods blew up on them, nine times out of ten is because they didn't have a good battery. Like the plastic or the wrapper gets messed up. Like I got to rewrap these. Because the way a battery is made, you have your positive up top. Your negative is actually the whole case of the battery. So you may have shorts. If you got two batteries and the casings are getting broken, those batteries will short together. There's a lot of things you want to watch out for. You want to make sure your battery's wrapped properly. If you're using a mech mod, you want to make sure you don't build too low. If you're using a regulated mod, you don't want to make sure you don't want to build too low because the lower the build, the more current you're going to pull, the faster your battery's going to go. And that's where you want to look at. When people say, I built, oh, I built a real nice build. I got two last of coils on here. I'm vaping at a 0.08. Yeah, but you're only going to get, and I'm, and I'm vaping at... 90 watts or I'm vaping at 100 watts. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. But what's going to happen is <laughs> your battery's only going to get four or five, maybe six pulls out of it. And then what What then? You've drained your battery down. So you got to think about when you're making your builds. And that's what you want to consider. And, you know, if you like, subscribe, comment. Hit the like button if you like it. Ask me questions. You can always get on my, go to my site, on my uh, channel. And I have a section called Discussions. Start a discussion up. Let's get talking out there. Tell your friends about it. Any questions you want to ask me, send them in. I'd love to answer them for you. All right, this is Stir Fry Vapor. Keep on vaping.